Imagine being carjacked, brutally assaulted, and also raped at the same go. This is an experience, if happened to some of us, it will leave a permanent damage in our lives. And we may not be able to move forward after that. However, this is not the story of my next guest. After going through a harrowing rape ordeal, she was able to rise above her trauma and today she uses her experience to create awareness on sexual violence. Thank you for joining us. Wangu Kanja, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm glad that you could find time to be here. I know you're a very busy person. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So now, before we talk about uh, the Wangu Kanza Foundation that you started, could you kindly take us back to the unfortunate day in 2002? Um, so, in 2002, I was working for a taxi company. And uh, it was the normal. Uh, the normal kind of work where you just go and meet people, and talk to them, ask them for business, marketing basically in sales. Um, and then I had to meet a friend who had a contract and in the process um, we were to meet in uh, Uhuru Estate yeah. because he left town before I could talk to him. Uhuru Estate along Jogor Road? Um, it's, uh, it's Near Buruburu. Uh, somewhere in Buru, uh, ah, okay. Buruburu, Kimathi. Ah, okay. It's okay. actually Uhuru, not, it's Uhuru estate. Okay. Um, where we met, we finished our discussions, and then when I was about to go home, it started raining. And he was like, you know what, it doesn't make sense mm -hmm. for us to leave, um, so let's wait for... The rain to stop. To, the rain to stop, and then I, I'll drop you home either way because I have a car. And I was like, okay, sure, why not? So at around 11, um, he told me now I can drop you. Is it 11 p.m. or? Uh, 11 p.m. Okay. Um, he told me, but we need to pass by my house so that I can pick up a, a jacket or a sweater. And I was like, sure, because we are. You're two? Uh, we are three. Pla no, you're three now, plus yeah. he's driving. Uh, three of us, and we are driving. Yeah. And then, um, because. During those days, uh, a lot of insecurity. Mm -hmm. So when we stopped at his house, mm -hmm. we didn't notice that there was a car that was following us. Ah, a car has been trailing you guys. Yeah. So when mm -hmm. we stopped, we saw just guys kept coming out with long jackets and guns. They told us um, we give them our valuables and then we move to to the boot mm -hmm. so that we can the three of us can actually try fitting ourselves in the boot. But. He the three of you in a, in, a, in a boot? Yeah, so he jumped. Okay. Uh, he could not close. Okay. Uh, so we went and sat on the back seat, mm -hmm. um, three of us, and two carjackers on each end okay. so that nobody would So how many, how many were, the, were the carjackers now? Um, there were, I, I think, five. Mm -hmm. uh, because they were driving two cars, mm -hmm. and then they had to leave one and come yeah. to the one that we had. Mm -hmm. So there were five, and then um, after kajaking us, we went round in circles mm -hmm. just to find out whether there's somebody who saw what had happened and they called the police. Okay. Um, at some point, they dropped the two, the two of my friends at uh, Bahati shopping center. So they, they, dro dro they dropped two of your friends at yeah. Bahati? And then we drove off. Uh, basically, what they had said is um, they took me as security just in case the pin numbers did didn't work. Yeah. So the pin numbers for the for the for the, the card, ATM, for the ATM, ATM cards. Yeah. Mm. And then we went round and then came to um, City Stadium. So at City Stadium, there is a place where they had fenced. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with iron sheets. Mm -hmm. So that's where I was held captive. Mm -hmm. And then. Uh, While the others were trying to to, 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 to get money the money from the ATMs. The ATM, yeah. yeah. Um, so during that process where I had one person with uh, money in the door and one person with me inside. Mm -hmm. So he's the one who actually um, held uh, me at gunpoint and mm -hmm. raped me because he kept on threatening. And they kept on saying no, but at some point he removed a yeah. bullet mm -hmm. and gave it to me and told me, if you don't do what I'm asking you to I'll do, shoot you. I'll shoot you. So mm -hmm. I didn't have a choice. Yeah. Those are situations where you can't negotiate. No, you, you, you yeah. can't because your life is already yeah. in danger. Mm -hmm. Wow. So have you, have you, how long did it take you to heal? Um, it has taken me a total of 12 years. Mm -hmm. And I can't... 
I can't, I will not lie to people that yeah. it's easy. Yeah. It's a long, frustrating, mm -hmm. depressing mm -hmm. journey mm -hmm. because um, immediately it happened. I, I was able to access because I, um, because I had the information. Yeah. My one of our family friends used to um, have sessions with young mm -hmm. people yeah, on yeah. sex, sexuality, and sexual violence. Mm -hmm. So she had given us information, information. just in case this happens. Yes, you, know happens you know what to do. So what happened immediately after that? Um, after? So I knew that uh, immediately when such a thing happens, I need to present myself to the police, to the hospital. Oh, to, to hospital, hospital first. Yeah, of course. Um, so that they can actually take the measures of you contracting HIV or mm -hmm. conceiving. Yeah. Uh, by giving you post-exposure prophylaxis. Uh, it's a combination of uh, different medicines, uh, ARVs, antibiotics, mm -hmm. and emergency contraceptives, mm -hmm. um, so that they can address uh, whatever sexually transmitted infection that you might you have, might have this, caught, yeah, yeah, at that, that particular time. time. Mm -hmm. So I had the information. Mm -hmm. What I did is I just went home because I felt like I really dirty. I wanted yeah. just to scrap off yeah, where I was yeah, so yeah. I went home, and which is wrong. After the hospital or before, no, no, the, before, hospital. before the oh. hospital? Before the hospital. So you washed off the evidence? Yeah, because that's that's how I was feeling at yeah, that particular yeah, time, but yeah. it's not the right Of thing. course, out of the confusion and, yeah. you know. Um, so I took a shower, went to hospital, and at the hospital they tell you what you're supposed, whatever is supposed to happen to you. Uh, so that they don't traumatize you more. Yeah, more. Um, unfortunately, um, not everyone uh, is there to serve you. Yeah. But they serve their purposes by asking you, um, are you sure that you are raped? You are just saying. In hospital? Yeah. But uh, they should know better. We, I'm we thinking are all human beings and <laughs> ethics to different people. Nobody will just go to a hospital and, and, and claim they've been they've been raped. But I mean, um, keep in mind that mm. all of us have been socialized in a, in a different way. A yeah, different that way. is true. And culture and tradition mm. actually rationalizes, condones, and justifies violence. Yeah, yeah. So we have women who actually. Um, if they hear somebody has been violated, yeah. they're the ones who actually are first to mm -hmm. judge to collect, you. Yeah. What, what was she wearing? Yeah. <laughs> or which company were you keeping? Or you went yeah, it's true. out with a man and you decided that mm -hmm. um, you're going to have sex with him, but you yeah. changed at some point. So mm -hmm. they justify using all manner of excuses. Oh, excuses. Yeah. So have, been, have you been able to rise above you know, the trauma that you, you, you went through that day? Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the things is, is in the process, you actually hit rock bottom. Because mm. I hit rock bottom, I went into depression yeah. uh, for two and a half years. Mm. And coming out of that actually uh, took, I think, God's hand to get me out of that. Because yeah. it was one of those lowest Low moments. Points. Yeah, and, and, and I'll, we'll talk about it in a bit. But after, I think after you, you, you went to the hospital and then you went to the police station to report, and when you reported the matter to the police station, they asked you to, of course, to write on the OB book. Do they give you specific instructions on what to write or, and why, maybe? Actually, when we went to the police station, what they did mm -hmm. is they wrote robbery with violence. Okay, I didn't know any better, and at that particular time, my mind was not mm. focused on. I, I just course. wanted to get you know, out of yeah. that. Uh, but I just was still shocked. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that when uh, when I disclosed what had happened to me, what they said at the hospital, yeah. No, uh, at, at the police station. At the police station. What did they say? Uh, they asked me whether I'm married or in a relationship because I don't need to <laughs> disclose, disclose yeah. what, uh, what has happened. What does that have person, to do with, with, with what happened? Yeah, because a person would leave me or divorce me, and that happens. Yeah. The truth of the matter is there are people who actually look at it as if the person who's mm -hmm. been violated is the one to blame. On, on the, on the and the community actually tends to mm. protect the perpetrators, but it's a high time we actually shift blame. Yeah. Everyone needs to be held accountable, accountable. for their actions. Mm -hmm. So if you've uh, violated 
an individual in any way mm. you you are to be hold, you need to be held accountable for your actions for your actions yeah. so basically you wrote what the police uh, man told you to write of it no they they write and then you read you proofread it oh okay so, so you just wrote a robbery, robbery with the violence, violence. And but what happens is when you when once you've gotten because i went to the police station before mm. going to the to, to the, the hospital, hospital yeah what we advocate for people to do right now is to actually to the present mm -hmm. themselves to hospital first mm. because they are, um, most of the health facilities have, have people who are being trained, trained mm. and forensic nursing. Yeah, and to take care um, of such cases. Yeah, to, to handle evidence. Mm. But also they can call the police to come and collect evidence. Ah, okay. Uh, so from there, once they've given you a medical report, mm. you can go to the police and then the police at the police station they will use the medical report report mm. to charge yeah uh, the, the, the perpetrator yeah on the findings from okay. the hospital okay then that will be used in court so did they finally write the rape you didn't include part of the report no and they didn't want to pursue it because they oh, know the legal system is just and then you see after all they've told you that you shouldn't say that because of this so you're already afraid even for the because of the stigma and maybe the challenges that will come yeah. with that because we are always um we are always condemning, discriminating the, the survivor mm. or the person who's been violated mm -hmm. instead of um, changing our focus on the person who has perpetrated the violence, who yeah. needs to be held accountable and he's the one on the wrong. Because yeah. you, can't, you can't start justifying when an adult mm -hmm. has abused a child yeah. and you start saying the, you child, just called, <laughs> you know, the child called upon it. <laughs> violence is violence. Yeah. There's no you, you can't justify. Yeah. You cannot justify that. Yeah. So now it took you a while before you could get like psychological counseling professionally. Yeah. And at that time you you turned into alcohol and basically you became alcoholic and you said a while ago that that's maybe the time you hit uh, rock, rock bottom. bottom. Yeah, that's when I, I went into depression. So what was your thought process at that time? Um for me I was looking for an an, an easy fix like I was running away from this the reality, yeah. mm. um, and that's not the way to go. Because even right now, currently, mm -hmm. there are people who are alcohol, using drugs, mm. being promiscuous, mm -hmm. or um, engaging in prostitution, mm -hmm. because that's the only way they can numb their pain. Because yeah. using, um, uh, trying to use such avenues yeah. is for you you are running away from, from the pain. reality and then you are numbing your pain by doing something that you know is very right mm. uh, it's not right mm -hmm. but at the back at the back of your head uh, you're like i don't have a choice so how long did that take place before uh, you finally for two, for the two and a half years two and a half years mm. and then it got to a point where i was like you know what i'm tired yeah i, I, I need to get your life together how, to move um, forward um, Going to move forward, mm. but one of the things is you need to start the conversation. Yeah, but you need to start the conversation with somebody who's not going to stigmatize you, mm -hmm. who's not going to look down on you, and also someone who will work with you through the journey because it's, it's a journey, a, it's, a journey. it's a long it's journey a for day. that. It's not a one day event, affair. yeah. And um, trauma affects different people in mm. different ways because uh, the background of socialization, your upbringing, all those things mm -hmm. actually uh, make you as an actually construct you in such, yeah, a certain way. Yeah, that you are. So trauma affects people in different, in different ways. ways. Yeah. All right. We'll take a short break and then we'll come back and now we'll talk about the, the Wangu Foundation that you started and you'll let us know more about it. In case you're joining us, my guest today is Wangu Kanja from Wangu Kanja Foundation. She survived a horrifying rape ordeal and of course it took a while before she got help and after she got help, she uses now her experience to try to, you know, uh, create awareness on sexual violence and also just inspire other people who uh, maybe have gone through the same experience and see how they can get help. Stay with us. We'll be back in a bit.
Welcome back. In case you're joining us, my guest today is Wangu Kanja from Wangu Kanja Foundation, a foundation dedicated to addressing matters sexual violence and also trying to uh, cancel and, and help uh, rape survivors. So now, Wangu, tell us more about the Wangu Kanja Foundation and when it was started. Um, so Wangu Kanja was born from by rape ordeal uh, in 2005. Um, it's a not mm, non profit, a, not for profit, mm -hmm. but also not a political um, institution. We, we're tired of the, <laughs> the politics, yeah, so, we have enough of that. <laughs> so, what we do is to work, working towards a society that is free from any form of violence, mm. uh, but with a focus on sexual violence because sexual violence destroys someone mm. or takes away their dignity. So, we, we are working towards restoring the dignity of mm -hmm. survivors and their families. Yeah. So I know the organization assists, uh, say, women who maybe after the, sec the, the sexual, uh, the, the rape uh, ordeal, uh, maybe they conceive and they're willing to take the pregnancies to term. The women who decide they want to carry the baby to term and you're able to help them. How, how do you help such, uh, such women? Okay, before I answer your question, mm -hmm. is we do not discriminate. Mm -hmm. So our organization is open for men, women, men and, women both, yeah. and children, mm -hmm. uh, because um, sexual violence does not affect discriminate. Everybody. It that affects is true. everyone. Mm. Um, and then, two, we offer medical, psychological, and legal redress for survivors of sexual violence. Mm. Coming to your question, um, one of the things that we actually advocate for is anyone who has gone through any form uh, of uh, sexual violence. Um, or gender-based violence to present themselves in hospital within the first 72 hours. Mm. Uh, one, because um, the HIV virus takes 72 hours to get into your blood, blood stream. Your blood, yeah. And then two, you might conceive immediately mm. um, because the person might not have used a condom. Yeah. And, and then, in most cases they really don't. Yeah, and yeah. then for us to be able to actually address all those issues in good time, mm. um, we recommend people to go to hospital as soon as they can. Mm. And one of the things is do not be afraid because your life depends on it. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't go, chances of you conceiving is high. Yeah. Uh, chances of you contracting HIV is high. Mm -hmm. So you will be addressing three issues. Okay. You are raped, you conceived, and you contracted HIV, wow. which we've had quite a number of clients mm. uh, coming in, in those uh, with the, those situ three situations, three cases, and it, it becomes complicated. Now it's yeah, yeah, because it's like when when they're going for for counselling, it's like peeling an onion. You have to peel every slowly, layer. Yeah. yeah, and it takes time. Yeah, uh, but if you present yourself um, to the hospital or health facility. Mm -hmm as fast as you can, yeah. then those issues can be addressed then. Yeah. Um, we've taken quite a number of women or girls who've conceived uh, through counseling sessions and given them information. Mm -hmm. But two things. One, it's upon the person, the individual. To, to make, make the decision, decision, yeah, whether they want to keep the pregnancy yeah, or not. or not. But two, um, keeping in mind that abortion is illegal in Kenya. Mm -hmm. The only person who has a um, authority to uh, to terminate a pregnancy mm -hmm. is a doctor. Is a medical practitioner. Yeah. yeah. After they have identified or um, they've done tests and uh, decided that the, the, the mother's life is in danger. Yeah. Or <laughs> That's the only time they can actually terminate. Yeah, but true. Um, the truth of the matter is, if you get someone to support psychologically, mm. you can carry the baby to term. And you can love that child as any other child who, who came. Yeah. And even if you're not able to, maybe you're not, you didn't want another child, you can give it up for adoption. Is that yeah. an option, maybe? Yeah, it's also an option mm. because we have adoption agencies. Ah, okay. Yeah. You work together with adoption yeah. agencies. Yeah. All right. So you say, and I quote, the biggest challenge in this is the silence of victims who view rape as shameful and refuse to open up. Why is talking about rape still have a stigma and considered a taboo in our society today? Um, culture and tradition. Um, if I can ask you, um, your parents, yeah. when you're growing up, mm -hmm. 
uh, did they talk to you about sex? No. Did they talk to you about <laughs> your menstrual uh, <laughs> cycle? No. All those they, they're just, just telling you, okay, you, now you need to stay away from that, for that yeah. boy. Yeah. But they're not telling you why and why are the, are the, are the dangers and, and you know what happens. They don't really tell you. <laughs> yeah, because we've grown up um, knowing uh, sex, sexuality and sexual violence are topics Tabu not to be discussed to openly. Be discussed openly. Mm. Um, and then to, to be discussed uh, by young people or mm -hmm. let's say people who are not in a married situation. Yeah. And that's where we go wrong. So we what? Need, should, yeah, we need to actually start having a conversation. Open conversations uh, with um, with children mm. because we've discovered even children who are seven year old are engaging in sex. In sex, and they even if they're not, they know. Yeah, they more know than we give happening. them credit to. Um, and then you know the way our houses are structured. Mm. They are very like compact so mm -hmm. you can actually hear what's happening in the next room. in the next room and, and so that by itself already predisposes yeah. the child to, 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 yeah, sex, to sex very early yeah. okay so we need to actually start that conversation mm -hmm. and um, it's one of those things that with emphasis on we need to have the conversation because if we don't things are getting out of hand yeah and then we will not be able to contain what is coming because yeah. right now we have so many people who in the past have gone through sexual violence, mm. presently are going through, and in the future we will have some even in the Even in relationships, yeah, <laughs> it happens. I was talking to a lady the other day and they're saying, even the cases of rape in marriages, in, in uh, relationships, is, isn't the increase. It's only that people don't talk about it. Yeah, yeah, but also the Kenyan law does not recognize, does not that, recognize that. Yeah, <laughs> So we need to have the conversation because one of the things that people don't know um, when it comes to rape, mm. it's about power mm -hmm. in relations, yeah. power and relations, but at the same time, consent. Mm -hmm. If I've not given, given you the consent, con yeah. consent mm -hmm. It's my you body. violated me. Yeah, if yeah. It's, it's my body. Mm. And one of the things that we've, um, in the past, culture and tradition has always um, like directed people in a direction where people are not supposed to, to open have up. conversations. Yeah, about this. Yeah. Where you know a woman is a, a woman is supposed to say what you. Yeah. But we are evolving. Mm. Women need to have that conversation because you need to be in charge of your reproductive health true and men also because you're in a relationship with mm -hmm. a man who needs to be in the picture because if you're using contraceptives then if they affect you they mm -hmm. affect him yeah because he will come and say you know what nowadays you're not feeling like having <laughs> sex what, what's or up? you've been bleeding for two weeks yeah so <laughs> what's going on they yeah, need true. to understand because exactly. yeah uh, whatever uh, reproductive uh, whatever uh, contraceptive or reproductive health mm -hmm. uh, issues that you're going through affect both, affects especially both, in a relationship. Yeah. And people, men and women, need to have that conversation. Yeah. yeah. So talking about conversations, the first time you you opened up about your your uh, what happened to you, how was the experience like publicly when you first nasty. opened up? Yeah. Very nasty, because people were pointing fingers at me, saying William Stanley Repua. Oh, so, so it's stigma. Yeah. Going back to, you need to appreciate that the person who has gone through any form of violation, it's not their fault. Mm. It's the other person's fault. fault. Yeah. And the person needs to be held accountable for his action. Um, because I've mentioned sexual and gender-based violence has nothing to do with dress code, has nothing to mm -hmm. do with um, behavior mm -hmm. of an individual. Violence is violence, period. Violence is violence, and also it's about power and mm -hmm. relation. The person feels that they need to assert their authority over a person. Over you. Yeah. And that's why they use violence mm. to assert that authority over mm. you. So after that, were you, were you able to talk about it, or how long did it take you to even come out and speak about it again? Um, after okay, your first me, experience? Um, when during the depression period, I actually made a decision that enough is enough. I need to come into terms with what happened, and from that that particular time on, I I didn't care what the outside voices was. Yeah. 
it was about to me mm-hmm. and how I would use my own personal ex- experience to help other people. And through that, did you heal even more? Were you, you became liberated even more through sharing? Yeah, but um, I had to go through a process mm. where I came into terms with what happened and also like a forgiveness yeah. process mm. where you have to forgive different because you you blame a lot of people you yeah. blame your family you blame you blame the government you blame for the insecurity friends, yeah you, you blame everyone because they had a role to play so mm. you have to come into terms where you forgive everyone everybody yeah and say you know what um, and forgiveness is, is for oneself yeah yeah but that does not mean mm-hmm. the person who actually violated you should not be held accountable true yeah, it's not in the absence of justice yeah i agree yeah. so now what are some of the factors that predisposes the, the sexual offenders? Um, the few offenders that uh, actually met, mm-hmm. um, one, they were violated. Mm-hmm. In their life, at some point, they were violated. Mm-hmm. Um, but also other psychological or mental health issues mm. contribute mm-hmm. culture and tradition mm. um, casing point circumcision and okay. no pun intended to any ethnic <laughs> group that yeah. um, practices mm. uh, circumcision mm. but I, we know very Once well you have that, that. Um, when boys are going through uh, that process mm. of uh, Transformation from being a boy, boy. to man to the circumcision. Yeah. Then you you are told you're a man. Now. You're a man now. <laughs> Go out there and be a man. Be a man. <laughs> so what does that mean for the boy? Yeah. You you've not been taught how to handle uh, women. Mm-hmm. You've not been told that you actually need consent mm-hmm. um, for a person to have sex with you mm-hmm. or communicate with that person, mm-hmm. create a relationship mm-hmm. so that person. Uh, to be in a relationship with mm. you. It's not about you going and tell, telling a woman I want to have sex with you. It must... Create a relationship. Yeah, gradually, <laughs> there, there must Build be a relationship. That. Yeah. Because men and women are created... Differently. Differently. Yeah. Men are visual. <laughs> men, a man will actually see a woman and get aroused. Exactly. A woman is an emotional person. <laughs> Um, maybe having conversations, yeah. going out for dates, good. Uh, things like that. L- l- things like that will actually get the woman to get her out. Uh, yeah. So we have been created differently, and that's mm-hmm. one of the things that actually people need to understand. Okay. It's about a conversation and a relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then f- um, families need to have that conversation at the family unit. Yeah. Even regardless of whether they've gone through like a. a a, a, a cultural process to mm-hmm. understand that you know, you've developed from uh, moving from a boy to, to a man. man. Yeah, you need to know yeah. the consequences of that comes to that responsibility yeah. because you might end up doing that and then you contract HIV. Yeah, true. Too bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's it's not safe. Uh, yeah. Kids needs to when such like you mentioned such uh, processes they need to be maybe cancelled and given the right information on how to move forward. Yeah. So now on a lighter note. What is one thing that you cannot leave a house without? So that's a must have <laughs> mm. or a must do. <laughs> uh, I don't know, maybe my <laughs> bottle of water. Ah, okay. <laughs> um, things to snack on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I keep on jumping from one meeting to the other, so in the process, yeah. I don't so get Sometimes you don't get yeah. to sit down and have a so, proper meal. Um, things to snack on, mm-hmm. but before uh, we wrap up, one mm-hmm. of the things that I actually want, the reason I want to say is mm-hmm. when we are having this conversation, mm-hmm. it's good to know that um, sexual and gender-based violence mm-hmm. affects everybody. everybody. That is true, yeah. Everything. Everything. Every, every single individual, mm-hmm. but also everything. Yeah. And we need to address sexual and gender-based violence in totality. Mm-hmm. When we are talking about education, mm-hmm. we need to address sexual and gender-based violence. Mm-hmm. When we are talking about insecurity, we need to address sexual and gender-based yeah. violence. Yeah. When we are talking about development of a mm-hmm. country, mm-hmm. when we are talking about sexual and reproductive health, mm-hmm. 
basically when we are talking about everything yeah. in the country it needs to be addressed sexual and gender based violence should be like number one yeah. top priority mm-hmm. and the reason why i'm saying this i'll just give you an example of um, when it comes to radicalization mm. if i was violated and i am a young man yeah then the person took away my dignity mm. then i don't have an identity mm-hmm. the rest of my family friends and even service providers are not listening to me because mm-hmm. i need to be listened to if somebody comes by and they give me that opportunity to vent my anger my resentment and the hurt mm-hmm. that i'm going through yeah. that person gives me an identity okay hence i'm easily radicalized and yeah. easily brought in ah, i feel like now somebody because i belong cares. yeah so i belong yeah. yeah 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 so that's why i'm saying every con- every single conversation that mm-hmm. we are having mm-hmm. sexual and gender based violence must be number one because um hurting people hurt others yes yes true so if we don't address help, that yeah the yeah. hurt then it means everyone in the community will mm-hmm. be affected be hurting, and yeah. in a family if one person is affected everyone the is affected the rest of us yeah yes, and true. it might be emotionally psychologically and also financially even physically sometimes yeah. so <laughs> we need to actually as a country to start mm-hmm. the, that conversation and yeah. that's why i'm saying we need to start the conversation now and mm-hmm. people should stop being <laughs> afraid of, of talking so and so will say so and so will say it doesn't will, help they will always say they will wake up they will sleep they will yeah. always continue and the sun will always yeah. rise and, and go down so the end of we, the day we you need to your have peace. that conversation because it's the issue is bigger than we think, we think yeah. and then Right now we are sitting on a ticking time bomb because past experience past violations have not been addressed. Mm-hmm. Present violations are not being not addressed. addressed. Yeah. And we are moving on to, to the, the future. future. Mm. And then who knows because casing point all all the people who are affected in 2007. Yeah, nobody talks about them. Yeah. Uh, the the so, people who were sexually violated yeah. in 2007 because so, of sexual violence. I think people had had people Wow. So now we we are finishing but before I let you go what is one thing you would like people to know out there about Wangu Kanja that probably we didn't talk about today? Uh individual or organization? <laughs> In any way, <laughs> individual. <laughs> um for me um the one thing that I'm actually um very grateful for is I can use my own personal experience to help other people because I can see I can feel the pain um specific that specific individual is going through and also the family is going through because um issues of sex, sexuality and sexual violence is not an easy topic to have mm-hmm. but at the same time uh there is hope you can heal and you can back to be to come back to life, to, to your, your normal, your normal self, self, again. self yeah and even be a better person and for me you can reach out to Wangu Kanja Foundation um we can help you through your healing process for me hope is one of the things that just just keeps me going okay. every single day mm. although there are times that I would want to just give up because <laughs> things become too yeah, complicated too com- yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So Wangu, it was really a pleasure having you here today. I'm sure you've helped so many people out there. You know, so some of these things something like that when it happens, people get stuck and they don't know how to move forward with their lives. So hopefully someone has been inspired out there. Now you know where to go. You can uh look for Wangu Kanja Foundation in case you you you've been uh, violated or even for more information in case you know somebody who needs help and they will be happy to help you. Let's keep the conversation going. Wangu, thank you for coming. Thank you. It was thank a pleasure. And until next time, it is bye-bye from me.